Hey guys, it's Sharon from Digital Nomad Quest. And this is Sean with Everything REI. And today we're going to talk about how we launched our first Airbnb. Now, if you guys are new to this channel, welcome. I'm all about teaching you how to build passive income, become financially free, and design your best life. So if you guys are interested in that, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified of my latest videos. Make sure to subscribe to Sean's channel where he talks all about real estate investing. So as you guys may have already seen in previous episodes, we have decided to move to Dallas, Texas. And you might already know we're actually doing this for many different reasons. A lot of it is for real estate investing reasons. And in order for us to make this move, we had to actually Airbnb out our primary residence. That would help offset the cost of the two mortgages we're going to have. So we bought a place in Dallas, Texas, actually. And then we have the place in the Bay Area. And the idea is that the fully furnished rental will bring in rental income that will offset the costs of the mortgages of the two properties. So one of the challenges that we encountered in the particular city that I live in, there is a short term rental ordinance, which means that you need to abide by their rules, which means you have to get a permit and they're going to only issue permits for people who actually live on the property. Since we are moving away you know, to another state, obviously we're not going to be there on site to make sure that guests here are abiding by whatever rules. So to bypass that ordinance, by doing 30 plus day fully furnished rentals, you're no longer in that short term rental category anymore. You don't have to pay transient occupancy taxes anymore. You don't have to buy by the city's small ordinances. It's as if you have a regular long term rental contract with a normal tenant. So I've posted a couple of videos on the Airbnb process, but now we're actually complete. As you guys can see, we're not in the studio anymore. We're at a different place. We're in a transition period where we're going to wait till our property closes in Dallas so that we can actually move in. So in order for us to prep this Airbnb, we actually took my friend Michael Elefante's Airbnb course. Not actually completely done with it yet, but it gave us some idea of what the dashboard looks like and what we should start thinking about. And if you want to check out the course, there's a link below in the description. So before we even had this as an Airbnb, we had a lot of smart home features in the home already. So the lock was already a Yale door lock which is August enhanced Yale slash Google, whatever, like door lock where you can program the codes. You can have it on the app and give other people code. You don't have to physically be there to make sure that they turn keys or you don't have to worry about them copying keys. Once the tenant is out, you can change the lock so that they don't have access inside the property. Cool thing is it integrates with Airbnb directly. So when someone books your place on Airbnb, this Yale app will automatically create a code for them. That's really cool too. And maybe you can put a link in the description below as well with that product. Yeah. And another thing we actually were thinking about is that we have laundry machines in the downstairs stairs like garage area that is actually converted into a room but we were wondering if we were going to make that into a whole nother bedroom or we should just make this like a separate area that they access and if we are able to put our personal belongings in there to store we were just worried about those types of things so what we decided was that room wasn't going to be a room we listed on the airbnb as a bedroom we decided it would just be the laundry room and we would block off a certain portion so that people couldn't access like our other personal belongings that we didn't want them to touch. So we put like this tarp over everything and then we made it so that people can go into that downstairs garage area to use the laundry machines. Before we were thinking, oh, should we have like stackable ones in a closet and stuff like that? And it just seemed like really complicated. So we just left it the way it was. We just made this into an entire home Airbnb versus like room by room to make it a lot easier for us. But it turns out that there are a lot of different things we needed to think about, not just, you know, this laundry thing. There's so many different things we needed to fix up. It's been like a maybe one to two month process now because of all these different things we needed to fix up about the home. We're just going to break down like all the different things we repaired. So we started listing down a bunch of things. As you guys can see, I have like this whole list of things that I kept listing off for Airbnbs that we needed to do, but we were kind of taking our time with it until we actually got a booking. We put this listing on Airbnb with some photos that we took after we cleaned the house a little bit. We decided, you know what, we should put it up sooner so that we can even see if anyone's going to book it. We put them up, we put up all the listing details, which is actually a great learning process for us because we didn't know what it would look like to publish a listing. When we start doing that, we're like, okay, now we know how to replicate this in the future when we have more Airbnb listings. And then we actually got an inquiry maybe a week or two after we put it up. And this was from these Tesla interns who wanted to stay for a longer period of time. As you guys already know, we put our Airbnb listing for 30 plus days. That's what we were worried about, right? We've heard a lot of stories where people get bookings really like quickly off the bat. However, the way we're doing it was, okay, we're not going to have it open until maybe November. We also limited it so that it had to be a 30 day minimum requirement. Put the listing on the market to see there's an appetite for someone who wants to book 30 day plus rentals in our area. Historically, people were booking stuff for tech jobs, but because of COVID and whatnot, a lot of that business travel has stopped. We put it on maybe 
in like late September, early October. And for the first few weeks, we were getting no bites. We didn't really set up everything properly anyway. But actually, surprisingly, maybe in the middle of October, we did get this urn query that someone wanted to stay for 51 days. And so that was really exciting for us. We knew right then we had a hard deadline of like early November to get everything done. So once we got that booking and we realized it was legit, we started getting a little bit worried because at first we were very lackadaisical, but we knew there were some key issues that had to be fixed with the home. Three big things that we've repaired. One, in the backyard, I had a fence that blew down about a year ago. I just didn't fix it because I didn't care and my neighbor didn't care. The second thing was my house didn't look very appealing on the outside. And I think curb appeal matters a lot when people are first coming into an Airbnb. They want to feel like they're going to a nice house, not just some crappy old shack. Just for a few thousand dollars, you can have the whole place repainted and all the cycle cracks can be fixed. Third major issue was that in my personal bathroom, there were some deficiencies with the shower. It's kind of hard to use, kind of black grime here and there. For my house, I don't care. But if you want to have it be like a short term fully furnished rental, it has to be up to a certain standard. Decided to completely remodel that bathroom. And I think there's something wrong with that shower, right? They wouldn't be able to turn it on completely the way. Well, the handle is broken. I couldn't find a replacement for that handle. So you have to use like weird finicky like hand movements for it. And it was also a jacuzzi on it, but it hasn't mm -hmm. been used for many years. Yeah, so when you use a jacuzzi, like black stuff would come out. And there's no way to clean it because the black stuff's in the jets, right? It was like, let's just replace the whole thing and start from scratch. And while talking to other contractors, at first I only wanted to replace the shower and the bathtub but then they're like if I replace that I might as well replace the tiles I might as well replace the flooring if we need that with the toilet we might as well replace the vanities and the mirrors and so we ended up replacing the entire thing the whole bathroom which initially I was like kind of worried about all the costs that were adding up did end up costing a good amount of money we'll go into the cost in a bit basically you know we're prepping this Airbnb we're gonna be gone for a couple years will it really make back everything and I'm pretty sure it'll be good I think that this in the long run will be a good idea because if we end up kind of moving to different primary residences this can act alone as an Airbnb make a good amount of rental income for us so it'll be great for us to kind of grow our wealth well I'll say before you go into that don't forget that even though we're spending the money it's not like it's sunk cost like the house is actually physically better now it does look a lot better and I think it does make the value of the property increase as well yeah definitely now that we've done it i'm just very pleased with what we've done it's always a good idea to fix up the home and actually make the property appreciate in value in regards to the inquiry we got they paid a total of eight thousand seven hundred ninety six dollars and thirty two cents on airbnb and the total paid to us out of that was seven thousand seven hundred thirteen dollars and forty four cents and dividing the total paid to us by 51 nights it was about 151 dollars a night which we actually think we can boost in the future because this actually had no reviews at the time right so now that we're racking up those reviews getting people to stay hopefully getting some positive testimonials we could possibly boost the price of our airbnb crazy that airbnb got 15 percent on top of what we got right an extra thousand dollars they did get a lot nice but also you know like the price right now is also pretty moderate because we're also in the winter months i think mm -hmm. during spring and summer that's when travel really happens and you're gonna get more interns coming from these different tech companies maybe ten thousand dollars a month who knows we'll see that's pretty ambitious but we'll yeah. see i mean i think right now that price we charged for this inquiry it was pretty low compared to some of the other ones on market yeah so hopefully we can boost it hopefully in the better months the more in demand months we can boost it even more all right now let's go back to the repairs that we mentioned the bathroom remodel ended up being about six thousand dollars about four thousand of that was in labor so it's kind of a difficult process because we actually had some communication issues with our contractor it ended up taking longer than we had expected. We were worried he wasn't going to come in at the times he was supposed to. It did drag out and it was getting very close to when they were supposed to move in. It was actually, what, a day or two before? Day before. Okay, the day before. We finalized everything, yeah. Honestly, he did a great job though. A great job at a great price. It just that some things happened that were unexpected, right? Like he told us that he had a death in the family. He had to be gone for a week which I understood. And then later on, he finished the project. But then when we came back from a trip, we checked everything and we found there were some issues here. Like some things weren't connected right. There was some leaking in some pipes. And I told him to come back to finish the job. Then he got into a car accident. Of course, that delayed things as well. So for us, we weren't sure like, is he really injured from a car accident? Or is he just telling this as an excuse? We weren't 100% sure. But he did eventually come back again at the very last day and he made everything work. So now everything is good to go. So the whole thing was really remodeled. The bathtub, new shower, new toilet, new vanity, new light fixture new towel rod, new shower tiles, new tiles on the floors. Everything is new and it was pretty gross before. So I'm pretty happy that we fixed that up. And before that, we actually did fix the fence in the back that Sean mentioned. And we did that before the bathroom. We spent $2,700 for the fence. 
that was broken into two components. $300 for the fence that gives us access to the backyard, $2,400 for the fence that separates us with our neighbor who is behind us. And so for that part, the $2,400 part, we split that 50-50 with our neighbor behind us. So our total all in was $1,500 for the fences. Now we are also thinking about the paint of the exterior. It was something that felt a little more optional, but we decided to go for it. Turns out we're very happy we did that. We did a white paint with black trim, ended up looking really fresh, and we paid about $3,600 for it. And included power washing, uh, repairing the broken stucco, repairing any wood damage, and cleaning the paint and materials for the actual paint job itself. We also did add like a little brown accent in the front too. So it looks actually very good on top of that white and black look. Now we also had this ugly green mat in the front that was sort of to act like fake grass in the front yard. We decided to remove that and then put in grass seeds. We're gonna pay someone maybe a thousand dollars or something to like do that. And we actually saved on that expense by doing it ourselves. We were like hoeing the lawn and watering things, planting seeds. It was good that we actually did that work because we saved some money there. But a big chunk of this transition was we had to move a lot of the stuff in this one house and move it to another house that we'd be staying at for a couple months for that transition period. So I would say that was underestimated in terms of time that we actually left it kind of to the last week or two because this ended up being a very stressful process. So we had a roommate at the time as well. So it was also hard to get him to clean up his stuff and get ready to go as well. It's a huge process, right? You're living in a place for five plus years. You have a lot of old things. We actually got these garbage bags from the city, two large garbage bags that we could come in and throw away all the unnecessary things that we have in our house. Difficulty too of having that roommate was we wanted to keep taking photos while we clean up a room and then like put those on Airbnb. But you know, we were leaving that kind of to the last minute that we didn't have everything removed so that we could do that. While you start moving things, you realize how many things you have and how many trips you have to make. So we were driving back and forth between one house to another house, bringing like duffel bags worth of things over, dumping it over, going back and filling it up, coming back and dumping it over and over again. And meanwhile, we also knew that we should put laminate cards around the house to signal to the guests like, oh, this is how you use the shower or this is where the trash bags are and stuff like that. So those cards would be very helpful for the guests. Had to write those up and we also had to create a guidebook. And I thought the guidebook actually turned out really well. It had very instructional things. It had stuff about local eats, local things to do, local places to drink. So we had a lot of information in that guidebook. We had to spend a lot of time writing that up. The way we created that was we actually bought a template on Etsy. As you guys know, I totally advocate digital products on Etsy. So if you ever need templates where you can design something for an Airbnb guidebook. Etsy is a very useful marketplace to get those types of goods. So we ended up buying a template that we could use and fill in to create our guidebook for Airbnb. Now the total cost of the cards in the guidebook somehow added up to about $50. I was shocked at how much that cost. A lot of that pricing was for the laminate cards. I would say the printing of the guidebook ended up being kind of expensive too. So maybe you guys should print it at home instead. Anyway, it's $50 at Staples to get those all created. Meanwhile, we also got cleaners to start cleaning the house. At first we were gonna do that by ourselves, but we didn't realize this was supposed to be like a deep clean. Now we went on turnover b, &B to find our cleaner who ended up doing a really great job. We didn't realize again, it was a deep clean. So they ended up being there for maybe three days cleaning our place. The reason why I didn't think it was a deep clean was that we were basically emptying the whole place. And I thought some scrubs here and there, but it ended up being a lot of work. They were wiping off like years of grease on the cabinets, completely cleaning out the refrigerators. It looks brand new. Every like toilet and surface area was sparkling clean by the time they were done as well. So we paid $175 for that at first. When she realized it was a deep clean, she's like, it's gonna be $175 for this, but in the future it'll be $300, which we totally understand. So in the future, that will be the cost. Another thing that we want to do is we want to make sure the guests are responsible and not throw crazy ragers. So we had some cameras set up on the exterior of the property and also in the laundry room to make sure they weren't touching our personal stuff. Of course, you have to disclose all of that before they move in and let them know, hey, we have cameras in these specific areas. Now I installed a Nest Hello doorbell right in the front of the house a long time ago. To actually get it to work and record video, you have to sign up for the program, the Nest Aware program, which costs around $10 per month. So not a huge expense, but it's really cool because you can see people walking through, ping you whenever someone walks by, you can listen to their conversations while they're outside your house. So it's actually kind of cool, like seeing them walk up for the first time and going like, ooh, look how nice this house is. And we're like, yes, we need to get out there. <laughs> I also forgot to mention a few other things. We had a white couch that we purchased and we thought it looked good with the aesthetics of the place, but it means that the couch gets really dirty easily. There were a lot of stains on the couch before they moved in and we we're like, 
do we need to buy a couch cover? So initially we bought a couch cover and then it turns out it looked really weird on the couch and not pretty at all. So we returned that and then we were like, okay, maybe we can clean it instead of having to buy a whole new couch. We watched a bunch of these YouTube videos on how to clean couches. And then we tried this formula, which seemed to make the couch worse. So we were like, okay, maybe we need to look at another video. So we bought this Bissell Spot Clean Pro that actually cleaned the couch really well. You just put the little formula in there, spray it on the couch and then it vacuums it out. The vacuum portion makes it so that it actually like comes off of the couch. That really changed the game. The couch looks a lot nicer now. And then our stove was really disgusting as well. So we had to buy a whole new stove. We also bought remotes because we had lost one. There's little things that we had to fix up. So there's a long, long list as you guys can see in this video. That's why I had to make these daily lists of Airbnb things. Be like, okay, we need to get this done by September 17th. And by this week, it was very stressful. A lot of things we had to do. I would just keep, you know, crossing out each little line item when we finished them. Luckily, we got everything done in time. In the future, definitely make sure you move out everything sooner than later. So you start that gradual process earlier. But other than that, I think we did pretty well with how we managed, you know, creating this Airbnb. Do you have any thoughts? And speaking of last minute, very last minute, we realized that the cleaners used all of our paper towels and oh, we didn't yeah. have a coffee pot machine about that. and no coffee, right? So I went to Walmart, very last minute, bought all that stuff, set up everything, make sure everything was perfectly clean, took another video and then we left it. Yeah, I was actually thinking about now that you're bringing that up, there was a lot of other there's, you know, like last minute things. I had to film videos. I was literally on a work meeting and filming videos while I was on the meeting like this because we wanted to get that before we left. The Airbnb is gonna be rented out for 51 nights. We weren't gonna be able to go in and fix up our Airbnb list. So we had to do it prior to them coming in. So I got pictures and videos while on work meetings. And the cleaner mentioned that we needed our soaps and, you know, shampoos and conditioners to be filled to the brim. So I had to make trips out to Target to like get more of these supplies for the bathrooms and stuff like that. Super last minute. That's again, another thing to not do in the future. Make sure you start on these things earlier for sure. We had a hallway closet where we could allow guests to go in to get extra toilet paper, extra soaps and stuff like that. But we also had a stash that we put in the downstairs room with the tarp over it so that the cleaners can come in and restock when they needed to. We didn't want to put all the supplies available for the guests because they could just take all of them. We want to make sure for the next booking, the cleaner could, you know, use the actual supplies and put them back in. I think also what's really cool is that we are actually here for this first wave and we're not actually leaving until early January. So we can kind of see the whole process and, you know, if there's anything that comes up, we can be there and we can fix our processes before we actually leave or we will still be here by the time these current tents move out. We can go and take more photos that'll be better for the actual listing in the future. Again, we can restock on all supplies and make sure things are even better. I would definitely recommend like if you're going to remotely manage you probably need to be there for the first few bookings to make sure everything goes smoothly you also want to have someone who can manage the property while you're away i feel like created a strong relationship with the cleaner they actually went to the same high school as him you now she's super intelligent she was like super down to you know help with everything so we're gonna try to work things out with her when it comes to anything we need to fix up and i guess worst case scenario we do have friends and family here so if anything needs to be looked at we need to do a supply run maybe they can help out but because we're here still we're gonna be able to think on that more and figure out how to build the systems correctly to create a remotely managed airbnb last thing i did want to note was that with 30 day rent the problem is if people book on weird months and weird days, it's going to block off the chance for the Airbnb to be booked on, you know, prior or later type of thing. So you have to kind of plan how that's going to go. And we actually did get an inquiry from someone who wanted to book our place at kind of a weird time at a discount. And we decided we wanted to wait closer to that date before we allow for bookings with discounts and stuff like that because we didn't want it to affect the chances of bookings at regular pricing but also if they're going to book weird dates it's going to affect the ability to book between the current booking and that booking. So that's one thing also to keep in mind if you're gonna do a 30 plus day Airbnb is that you wanna make sure you limit your gaps as much as possible. Finally, you know, we are looking at different marketing channels as well. So Airbnb is obviously the most popular one, but there are other ones like VRBO, Second Address, and of course, all these other ones that we're looking into. All right, so that basically wraps up our first Airbnb. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode on how we were able to create this. And if you guys have any comments, let us know below what you guys think 
think about our new Airbnb. If you guys want to try doing it yourselves or not, make sure to smash the like button, subscribe, hit the bell button to be notified of my latest videos, and make sure to subscribe to Sean's channel again, where he talks all about real estate investing. And I'll see you guys in the next one.